What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. In the last video, we talked about stereo balance, multi-track mixdown, normalization, and why it's important to create separate files and folders for all of them. Today, we'll be discussing how to get rid of background noise using noise reduction processing and spot healing. Everything around us creates some level of noise, whether it's the air conditioning, lights buzzing, clocks ticking, the skin of our arms brushing against our shirt as we move across the instrument, shoes brushing across the floor, and even our breathing. Honestly, even if we take all the necessary precautions, the microphones will almost always pick up unwanted sounds. These sounds generally go unnoticed, that is, until we amplify or normalize our audio levels. These sounds generally go unnoticed, that is, until we amplify or normalize our audio levels. As we increase the level of the sounds we want to record, unfortunately, we're also increasing the level of unwanted sounds, which we characterize as noise. Let's start with how to get rid of room noise, meaning what the room sounds like with zero playing or movement. To get rid of room noise, we're going to use a tool called noise reduction processing. Noise reduction processing essentially takes a sample of that room noise and runs it against the entire session in efforts to cancel out that sound, but without affecting the sound of the instrument you were recording. In order for this tool to function properly, we need to have a clean sample to choose from. This is why it's super important to leave that 10 seconds of silence at the beginning of the recording. We'll start by coming to the beginning of the recording where we left that 10 seconds of silence. If you didn't, just find some spot where there is silence, even if it is really small. I'll just highlight a small portion of it, hit spacebar to play, and use Control L to loop the playback. What I'm listening for is a smooth, clean sample without any clicking on the repeats. If you're having trouble hearing it, adjust the amplitude of it temporarily, and then once you've got a clean sample, hit spacebar to stop playback, Control Z to undo the amplification, and use Shift P to capture the noise print, which you can also do by coming up to Effects, Noise Reduction, Restoration, Capture Noise Print. Use the forward slash key to zoom all the way out, and Control Shift P to bring up the noise reduction processing tool, which you can also do by using the same path and noise reduction process. All right, so let's talk about what we see here. First off, we've got two sliders, one for the percentage of noise reduction, and another for how many decibels we'd like to reduce it by. Before getting into the advanced options, which you can just close for now, I typically start with 100 on both, which should work really well, but only if the noise sample you took is really clean. Drag the tab out just enough so that you can see your timeline. Use Alt and the slider on your mouse to zoom in. Highlight a portion of the audio, preferably somewhere where there's a little bit of silence before it, and hit spacebar to play it back. You can turn the noise reduction processing on and off using the power button in the bottom left of the noise reduction tab. If you're wearing headphones, you can hear that the room noise is completely removed from the recording. Before moving on, let's listen to what this would sound like if I just sort of haphazardly took a random noise print without taking the time to listen to it. Hear how muffled and muddy that sounds? This is why it's important to get a clean noise print. Okay, so we covered how to reduce room noise, but what about other less frequent sounds, such as heavy breathing, stick clicks, or even feet scratching across the carpet? For these types of sounds, I like to use the spot healing tool. Let's start with heavy breathing. In the following sample, you can clearly hear that the mics are picking up my breathing in between the subdivisions. So in the waveform editor, which is what you see here, it's impossible to pinpoint exactly where those sounds are occurring. 
However, by using the spectral frequency display, I can clearly see and hear where that breathing is occurring. From here, I can pull up the spot healing brush by pressing B or by clicking on this icon up here. I can also change the size of the brush by clicking and dragging on the size value. I'll just click and drag the brush over the spot in question, being super careful not to touch or overlap the attacks of the notes, and you'll see and hear that the strength of the breathing sound is drastically reduced. Let's look at another example in which the shaft of the mallet made contact with the bar. Here, I'll use the same approach using Shift D to open the spectral frequency display, B for spot healing brush, and doing the exact same thing. So here was before. And here's after. Pretty cool, right? To show you just how small of a noise this tool is capable of getting rid of, the last example involves a very minor case of marimba string noise, which you may actually need headphones to hear. So shift D, B, Alt scroll to zoom in, heal, here's before, here's after. Okay, so now that we've covered how to get rid of background noise and any other extracurricular sounds in your recordings, the next step in the process is assembling the keepers and patching them together in a multi-track session using a technique known as crossfading, which I'll show you exactly how to do in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you feel like you're learning something from this series, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, happy recording.